When you sign up to homeschool, you sign up for your personal growth journey. If we haven't met, I'm Teresa Wiedrich, certified life coach and homeschool mentor here on the Homeschool Life Coach channel on Instagram. You can also find me on my podcast, Homeschool Mama Self Care. And this week, I'll be speaking all about decluttering, practically decluttering your homeschool room, practically decluttering your storage room, your pantry, fridge, all the things like that. But on today's uh, Homeschool Mom Chat, I wanted to introduce you to a concept of decluttering your homeschool mama mind. So if you haven't already heard me share this story, this is the reason why I went down this path to decluttering my own mind. When I was about my third or fourth year of homeschooling, I hit the wall, you know, the one that said, either I'm going to do this differently or else I'm going to have to put the kids on the yellow school bus. And I remember a moment in that day, it was a slump month, February, probably it was a foggy day, kind of like the one that I showed in the stories today, really foggy. I woke up with a bad headache and I remember thinking, oh darn, the kids are awake before me. I'd slept in I could smell the coffee that was right beside me, but it wasn't hot. It was kind of a puddle of something underneath it. And I knew that the kids had done what they did. The older kids were taking care of the younger kids while I slept. And it started off on that day, I was thinking to myself, when I just don't feel like getting out of bed, I didn't even know I slept through an alarm. But I heard the kids prepping stuff in the kitchen and I knew that they were probably making pancakes or waffles or something. And I was grateful that the older kids were doing something for the younger kids. So then I I heard their voices, kind of could tell that they were squabbling. I could tell they were squabbling when I went into the kitchen. But I, you know, there's drops of little pancake batter on the counter and on the floor. And they were fighting over the flipper. And I remember thinking, okay, I'm glad that they're making food. And also... Could they not like start this day where my headache, it's just too much. I'm feeling foggy, probably premenstrual. Maybe I had an argument with my husband and also possibly I was sleeping with a kiddo the night before because they weren't sleeping through the night. A lot going on. And I just remember thinking, please not now. I just need quiet this morning. I want to do this day, but I just need quiet. Well, it took me what it felt like is like, Olympic level energy to gather the energy of my four kids at the time probably age 10 all the way down to to three and I finally gathered the energy we went into the family room and gathered the circle basket or circle time basket and okay great everything's gonna work out we're gonna sit down we're gonna enjoy our time uh, doing the things that I've got in this basket some of the kids were gathering on the floor to do Legos and then the other ones were doing other crafts or things with their hands while they were listening to the first story. And yet it wasn't smooth like that because I don't know if it was somebody was fighting over what seat they were going to sit in or somebody was fighting over the cross stitch that they wanted to do or who knows, but something like that. And I'm guessing you can relate. You can imagine one of those mornings. Well, it didn't take very long for me to feel compressed and intense but I wasn't really aware of how I was feeling. All I noticed was all of a sudden, someone was getting very loud, very intense, too loud, too intense. And then I realized it was me. I could hear that that level of intensity wasn't going anywhere good, that I should turn on my heels and leave the room to cool down, to take a pause. Didn't always do that, but this time I did. And I left the room to my room, my bedroom, and I madly texted my husband, who wasn't available. He was, he's an eMERGE physician, so he was in eMERGE, something more emergent than me losing my stuff at home. And then I reached out to my friend and I rant texted. You know that rant texting where you're like, ah, I'm so mad and here's why I'm so frustrated. And the more that you do it, the worse that you feel. That's where I was at. So she interjected at some point, probably very carefully, but she interjected and said, Hey, I think you might benefit from watching this Brené Brown TEDx talk. Uh, There's this gal who, she just put out this TEDx talk yesterday and it went viral on YouTube. It went like crazy viral. You should check it out. And I went, okay. So I peeked my head out and I said to the older kids, can you look after the younger ones? Just take them downstairs to play. We'll do circle time later. 
or maybe it was outside. And so they said yes. And then I went back into my room, slumped at the end of the bed on the floor, grabbed, um, at the time it was my computer, and I was reading or watching this video of this woman with chunky black shoes, a jean jacket, and this beautiful blonde coif. And she said something about addressing who you really are, addressing your needs, knowing that we have to acknowledge the things that make us feel ashamed, the things that we don't really want to acknowledge in our lives. We need to address, we need to address our needs and who we really are. Be authentic, really own our stories. And I remember thinking, um, nope. That's not been me. That's not my event. And that's not been my experience. And I don't know how to do that. In fact, who am I anyway? I have no idea. All I know is that about 20 minutes ago, I was not even aware that I was yelling. I was so intense. It was sort of surreal. I knew there was loud noises, but I didn't even know it was me. That's how intense I felt. And that trigger I couldn't even tell you what the trigger was or why I was exactly feeling the way I was feeling. That was about my third or fourth year of homeschooling. I had in that moment a breakthrough realization that it wasn't just the daily challenges of homeschooling and trying to get your kids to be motivated or to sit down and do the thing that you planned. It was my internal stories, the ones um, like unaddressed triggers that I had or my need for control and my unresolved expectations of what we would actually do every day or how I would show up or how they would show up. And that was weighing me down. And here's the hard truth that I had to face which didn't happen in that moment. And it didn't happen the moment I watched the Brené Brown TEDx talk. It took solidly a few years afterward for me to begin to understand that those triggers, those triggers were not my kid's fault. They weren't my partner's fault. They weren't anyone's responsibility except for mine. To achieve greater emotional regulation, the number one thing you need to do is cultivate a practice of self-awareness. You must always be in learning mode around your thoughts, your feelings, and your triggers, because you will respond more effectively and make more intentional choices that align with your vision and your values. If you skip the step, you're going to continue the roller coaster ride of homeschool mama overwhelm. Let me tell you a quick story. There was a homeschool mom who came to chat with me. Let's call her Melanie. She was on her homeschool journey for over a decade. She valued relationships and self-directed learning, yet she felt stuck, overwhelmed most of the time, and bored some of the time as her kids were getting to be more independent. While her goal was to create an environment where her kids could be happy and express their true selves, she struggled with her big emotions. She found it challenging to articulate her frustrations or find real solutions for her challenge. The reason she didn't pursue coaching was because she felt overwhelmed and didn't know how to fit coaching into her life. Understandable, there's a lot going on. But if she doesn't stop to assess and clarify what's actually going on, she's going to stay on that roller coaster of homeschool overwhelm. I'm not going to let you make that mistake. I've got something special to help you out. I've created the Homeschool Reset Workshop. Just head over to my website, capturingthecharmlife.com, and book your seat for this upcoming Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The Homeschool Reset Workshop is going to uncover the roots of your overwhelm, build confidence in your homeschool approach, help you release perfectionism, and find contentment in what really matters. You'll learn techniques for managing emotional overload. You'll reduce your self-shaming tendencies as you create a more positive, healthy environment for you and your kids. You'll develop a homeschool experience that reflects your core values. You'll begin to let go of unrealistic expectations so you can be more present and engaged. And you'll have the benefit of connecting with other homeschool moms who will understand your journey because they're right alongside you. You'll gain perspective and find encouragement in a warm, welcoming space. You don't want to miss this. This was surprising for me. 
The book that I am reading for the next Homeschool Mama book club is called The Awakened Family by Dr. Shefali Sabri. I'm curious if you've heard about it. Um, this is a book, when I listen to this book, I'm listening to it on audio, and I'd heard a lot about this book. I've seen this woman in interviews many times, but she said these words, our children are not ours to control, they're independent souls on their own journey. That quote took me years to understand, but gradually I came to understand it. I've heard it just, I think I heard it just yesterday in this audiobook. I have learned that truth that though it feels like they came from our womb and we're doing everything for them to keep them alive and safe and happy, reality check, we aren't able to control their environment, control who they're supposed to be, control their motivation or control anything whatsoever around them. And that shift, just understanding that I wasn't in control, my children didn't exist to fix or to fulfill me, their behavior was simply a mirror to me, reflecting my own internal challenges and triggers. That was an invitation to help me grow and heal. And I don't know about you, I didn't know that that was part of my homeschool mom personal growth journey. That's not what I signed up for. So what does it mean to deal with our own triggers? Well, I think that word trigger actually is overused and I would love it to just like be brought into just the um, PTSD space because it has relevance if we use it just for that that area that really it when we talk about triggers oftentimes we're talking about just the the reactions that we have um but whatever we want to call it i'll just use triggers because the entire culture associates that internal reaction to triggers and you know what i mean so for me homeschooling became an important opportunity to learn about myself not one I signed up for, but it turns out it helped me unpack a whole bunch of stuff, especially my reactions. As you might know, homeschooling invites you to a self-awareness journey to get clear on the stories that we tell ourselves. Our triggers are like mental clutter. And here I want to expand upon how we can declutter our homeschool mama minds. As I said earlier, if you wanna to listen to a discussion about decluttering, your actual homeschool or like your homeschool room or if you want to declutter your fridge or pantry or declutter various aspects of your homeschool life beyond your then you can learn more on my podcast the homeschool mama self-care podcast because i had a special episode dedicated to that just yesterday uh homeschool mama self-care podcast so sometimes our triggers um, aren't just the big emotions triggers of stuff going on in a specific moment when too many kids are fighting at the same time or there's too many drops of pancake dough on the on the floor maybe it is a trigger of feeling a fear of failure or a belief that our homeschool should look different and it's not enough or a feeling that we need to prove our worth somehow even if it's not really specifically related to our homeschool, but maybe because Thanksgiving is coming for many American folk. We in Canada just had it. But when we have other people around the kitchen table quizzing our kids on various things that they think that our kids should know at a certain age, it does trigger a sense of, huh, I need to prove myself. Uh, those inner stories, they often show up in our homeschool, impacting our peace, our ability to just be present, our relationship with our kids and our ability to just enjoy our homeschool lives. But as Shafali Sabari says, she says, if you want your kids to, fee to be free, you must, you must first be free. Our internal work isn't separate from our parenting. It directly affects our kids' internal sense of freedom and their joy. So if you're bogged down by unrealistic expectations or triggers, those things will affect your entire homeschool life, the entire atmosphere of your homeschool family. There was one tool, uh, you know, before I go on with the tool that, um, that I'm going to share with you, I'm curious if you relate to this conversation and what it is that you see as your biggest trigger. Okay. 
So here is the tool that I first heard from a fellow lady named Byron Katie. Uh, Byron Katie shared this four question tool. It is about um, a simple process, helps you to look deeper and question your beliefs. Okay, here's what it is in a nutshell. I have it actually as a, what I call the thought care checklist. So if you want the questions, then definitely please let me know and I will get, grab that for you. So the four questions, when you feel big feelings, so this is me, this isn't Byron Katie. When you're feeling those big feelings, the practice is to spin on your heels and leave the room if you don't know how to slow it down in the moment when you're present with your kids. Just spin on your heels and leave. Go take a breather, like literally take a breather. Go to your mirror in the bathroom and look at yourself. Just look. It's different when you stay in your head, when you're angry or you have really intense emotions. It's harder to stay in your head and not see yourself in the mirror because then you're like, how do I make them stop doing this? Or how do I stop feeling this way? Or I feel so bad or boy, what's the problem here? How do I make this better? You stay in your head, but as soon as you go to a mirror, you're looking at your friend. You feel like you're looking at your friend. You're separating your sense of self from you. And so when you see yourself in the mirror, just like I am right now, I'm looking into the phone, I can see that I'm not sad, but let's assume that there's a moment where I'm feeling really intense and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry that you're feeling so intense. I'm sorry that you feel so sad right now or so angry or so confused all at the same time because you see it when you look in the mirror and you respond to your face the same way, way that I would respond if you were coaching with me and I would look at you and I'm, I would listen to your stories and wait till you share all of the intensity around it and, and then I would say, hey, I'm sorry, I've been there. I care. I know you can figure out how to approach this, but right now just know you're not alone. <laughs> so many homeschool moms before you have been there, done that. And I care. When we do that in the mirror, we can do that to ourselves. We see ourselves differently when we put ourselves in front of a mirror. Okay, so you're in front of the mirror and the next thing you're gonna do is ask yourself, what exactly am I feeling? What's going on in here? What is the thought behind my feeling? Ask yourself if the story you're telling yourself is true. That's the question. Is what you have believed as a thought to be true? Is it really true? So if you're thinking, I'm feeling as a homeschool mom, pause and ask, is that actually true? Yes, Whitney, a trigger I have to be mindful of is owning my kids' emotions as if they are my own. Oh, girl. <laughs> Story of my life. So as a highly sensitive person or Enneagram 2, that would be me, or INFJ, also me, and I thank you, that that is absolutely um, a default setting for us to feel the feelings of other people around us and to absorb them as though they are our own. But the first thing that I do is create distance by asking myself, is the feeling or the emotion or the experience, is true? Can I absolutely know it's true? That question goes deeper. Often the answer is no. Can I absolutely know this thing is true? Well, sometimes I feel like in the middle of really big emotions, heck yeah, it feels true. Whatever I'm seeing is obviously true. And here's how I know it's not always true. Because I'm married, and I exist in a, uh, in a story, in a life story with someone else who doesn't always see things the same way that I see them. It's helpful to know that your way of seeing things in the world is not the only way of seeing things. So can you know for sure that your thought is true? You might be struggling, but that doesn't mean that you're failing in that moment. If you're asking yourself, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm a failure as a homeschool mom, is it true? Well, maybe, maybe it's not. How do you react? What, what like actually happens inside of you when you believe that you are a homeschool mom failure? Seriously, what do you believe? Because I know what I feel. I felt like a sense of, nope, I don't like this. I don't like how I feel. I don't like how I'm showing up. Clearly, I'm a bad mom. This is not going to work. 
for me. I'm doing everything wrong. Why is it everyone else is doing things right? I go into that crisis of confidence and certainly self-condemning. Um, I feel tense. I feel like I'm more likely to snap at my kids, even though I'm feeling bad about how I'm engaging them. So how do I react? What happens when I believe that thought? That step helps me see the impact of holding on to the thought. Thanks, Whitney. Yeah, I'm glad that you you like the mirror practice. I don't remember where I learned about the mirror practice, but it's profoundly and weirdly helpful (laughs) because it sounds like such an odd thing to do, but actually it is very helpful. So I'm glad that helped. So the first question I'll review is, is it true? Your big feeling, is it true? The second question, can I absolutely know it's true? Third question, how do I react when I believe that that thought is true? And the fourth question, what would I be without that thought? This question is my favorite because it allows um, me to envision my homeschool day or um, how I'm showing up in my homeschool day as a homeschool mom without the weight of the limiting beliefs. So without the thought, that I'm failing or that I am a failure, how does that feel? Because for me, it feels more open, more relaxed. I feel more present, hopeful. This process was a game changer for me. Of course, as you can imagine, this four question framework was not just a game changer for me in my homeschool. It was a game changer in all the different relationships and all the different ways I showed up in life. And it continues to, it continues to. So by working through those um, questions or those those four question framework, it really helped me to untangle how I saw myself, how I was relating to others, and how I was relating to my homeschool. So I've actually put these questions into a free download. It was the very first download I ever created for homeschool moms. I call it the Thought Care Checklist. So if you'd like the Thought Care Checklist, let me know and I'll grab it for you. The other thing that I'd say, I have been a journaler my entire life, and if you spend enough time with me, you'll hear me talk about it a lot. I began developing these journaling workbooks over the last four or five years because um, I just see it as a valuable tool when I'm coaching someone that they need to understand what the source of their frustration is or their source of self-doubt or their source of guilt, and you don't always know that unless you have detailed the stories around your big emotions. This, um, I've created a specific one called the Big Emotions Journaling Workbook, and it helps you to unpack the stories around your biggest emotions. So if you're interested in that, let me know as well. If I can attach it to the bottom where it says product or something, I'll let, I'll, I'll make sure to do that at the end. One thing I've learned about my big emotions coming from a child of domestic violence, that's what my background was, um, is that you have to give yourself permission to feel your feelings. You have to accept that all the feelings are your feelings. And the reason why? Because you're human and humans feel feelings. Emotion means energy in motion. Emotion our instinctive emotional or feeling reactions to things, they're not necessarily our choice. They just happen for various reasons. We have to process it because that energy has to go somewhere. We have to accept the fact that we're humans that feel feelings. So first step is to accept our feelings. And then the second is to look at it and say, what is my emotional climate? What am I actually feeling on repeat? Are there scenarios that I see on repeat in my relationships or in how I'm showing up? And look at those objectively and say, okay, I need to go deeper and understand this more. Because it directly affects, as you can imagine, your relationship with your kids and how you're showing up in your life. As Shafali Sabri says, and remember that you're invited to the Homeschool Mama Book Club. We're gonna have this discussion in a couple of weeks. I can get you the link if you want to join us for that book club. The first seven days is free, by the way. So if you just wanna check it out and see if, are you my people? Do I feel like I connect with you? You're welcome to just check it out. So Shafali Sabre says, parenting is about letting go of control and embracing your kid's autonomy. 
who knew? But it's true, it is. Uh, my kids, my youngest kiddo is about to turn 16. I've got four kids and uh, the other three are all grown up and I had no idea that this was a lesson that I would have to learn, but it is absolutely true. Allowing yourself to experience your emotions without trying to control every outcome has been really freeing for me, both for me and also in teaching my kids. So here's my encouragement for you today. The next time you feel overwhelmed or triggered is to take a pause, breathe, go look in the mirror and ask yourself, what's really going on here? Is there a story or a belief that you're holding on to that's weighing you down? Try using Byron Katie's four questions to dig a little deeper. And if you're ready to go further, consider exploring your emotions through journaling. I know that we didn't all assume that signing up for homeschooling meant that you were also signing up for a homeschool mom personal growth journey, but use it as an invitation to grow. We can work to declutter our homeschool mama minds and, and our hearts. And we can make, and when we do, we're making room to be more we make room to be more present and enjoy our lives, build those memories with the kids more. So if homeschooling is more overwhelming than joyful right now for you, this is the season that a lot of homeschool moms feel more overwhelmed, then I'd love for you to join me at the Homeschool Reset Workshop. It's gonna be a two hour session about hitting the reset button in your homeschool so you can feel more joy and presence in your homeschool. So we're gonna discuss what's really driving your sense of overwhelm. We'll go into the depths of that because overwhelm's like an iceberg where the real challenges happen underneath the water and we don't always identify them. So we just keep hitting up against that iceberg if we're not really looking at the practical reasons for our overwhelm. So we're gonna discuss, or we're gonna have different exercises that will help you release your tendency toward perfectionism aligning your homeschooling with your values so you can feel like you've got more margins in your day and get clear on what really matters for you in your homeschool and in your family and in your role as a homeschool mom beyond your family. There's going to be um, obviously an exercise directly related to emotional overload and I'm going to leave you with practical strategies that you can use in your everyday. So if you want to join me, just ask me about the workshop, the Homeschool Reset Workshop, and we're going to have fun. It's going to be next Tuesday at, what is it, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Let me know in the comments below or send me a DM if you're interested, and I'll get you the booking link for that. If it sounds interesting to you, let me know. So that's Tuesday, November 5th. Ask me for the four questions. I can grab you the download for that and also the Big Emotions Journaling Workbook that I shared. I know it's possible to de-school or um, to declutter your homeschool mindset because I've done it. I continue to do it. I think this is a lifelong journey to declutter our minds. But if you're in the throes of really challenging stuff in your homeschool mom life right now, just know you're not alone. You can do something if you're proactive you can shift the tide or you can change the iceberg, maybe melt the top, maybe melt the bottom so that the top's not quite so sharp and prickly. I hope you have a beautiful week and we will talk to you soon. It was a pleasure spending time with you. If today's episode resonated with you and you're feeling ready for a fresh start in your homeschool, I'd love for you to join me at the Homeschool Reset Workshop. This is your chance to gain clarity, reconnect with your vision and values, and build a plan that truly works for you and your kids. Together, we'll tackle the overwhelm and help you find renewed confidence and tangible tools for your homeschool journey. I can't wait to see you there. And if you're not hearing this from anyone else, I want you to know I've done this work myself, so I know you can too. You can turn all your homeschool challenges into your homeschool charms. You got this.